Mixing an orchestra in a fast metal production can be overwhelming. In this clip, Jens explains why for him the key to a well-mixed orchestra is taking the broad stroke approach instead of obsessing over every tiny instrument in the orchestra. Check it out and enjoy. You know, in an orchestra, you you have um, the section and there's a, a hierarchy in there, like uh, the first uh, violinist, uh, the first violins, the second violins, but you also have like the pieces of um, um, actual players in there and. Um, you can hear here on the first one that there is someone like taking the lead with vibrato. Whilst the next mic. is a more plain playing. That's the lead player there. And the other has to follow and has instructions uh, of normally, you know, don't do too much. So you hear Confidence, not as much confidence. Um, yeah, that was just a little bit of orchestra nerdery. Okay, so now I put the mix together, sort of, and now I have the um, the uh, trees, or should I call it the room mics, and the um, the close mics here uh, separated from each other, so I can sort of find a blend. Stereo width is actually wider on the, the trees, uh, interestingly enough. Um, see if I can make that something about that. Maybe tack those in the double bass a little bit. And then even try to widen the stereo on the close ones. I have a stereo image that matches. Doing a little bit of M MS EQing here. The matrix on this one is laid out configure right now so channel two is the uh, s signal and channel one is the m signal so i'm lowering the m signal a little bit thus i'm uh, widening the stereo and on the s signal i'm lifting the top end a little bit just to get a little bit more sheen like that and even though that's this is recording uh, recorded into a scoring inside a scoring room uh, what i may have to do here is um, to not necessarily but I'm gonna try to do what I usually do and to put a like a scoring whole um, IR or altiverb thing uh, on this. And I have a favorite and I'm gonna share it. I might have done in the past as well. I create a new stereo auxiliary. I call it the um, strings winds alti. Okay, so now I'm feeding um, bus 4344 to a new track and on there I will put a reverb could also be just put on the sum and using the internal mix function but this way I can choose how much I feed put the mix on max and then I blend it in based on how much I put this fader up uh, and this way I can uh, choose if I'm gonna feed only from the direct mics the sum of the direct mics or also from the from the tree uh, I'm gonna start by just feeding more from the direct ones than the, uh, the tree. And um, 
my favorite one for most orchestral stuff is, is this Todd Ao, just a legendary scoring hall in LA that's not with us anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but this one is usually really, really good. You could think that you know it would sound better with maybe like a royal hall of music or uh, a church, maybe. But um, um, I've tried all IRs for this, and uh, this one is really, really, really good in terms of getting a big orchestra sound and make it fit into like pop and rock mixes. Okay, uh, it's just getting a little bit boomy in the low end. I'm going to put an EQ on that. Cool. Um, what I'm also going to try now to even out those passages a little bit. I'm going to try with the face lanyard uh, compressor. Uh, and I'm actually, since it's face liner, uh, I think I'm going to get away with using a little bit different settings, or at least maybe not different settings, but different instances on the tree track that I have and the sum of the close microphones. So I have uh, all the individual tracks here. Uh, actually, I haven't fitted the the, um, uh, the winds yet, um, and the strings fed into what's a uh, bus here for for the close mics, and then I have the the tree here, which is the room mics separated, and those are combined going into the string winds sum, and then there is a string winds altiverb. Uh, with the mix function uh, mix on 100%, which I feed from the tree and the some of the close mics respectively. Um, and now I'm gonna try to go in and do some uh, little bit of multiband compression, which is the most transparent type of compression that's known to mankind, uh, just to act more like a leveler and to keep things in. If, if this would be like an orchestral mix only uh, done for audiophiles, uh, I wouldn't do this. But um, since this is something that I need to fit into a metal mix, this is sort of my way to, to get going. And the rest will be automation, whatever I need beyond this. I could also maybe try with some sort of parallel compression on this. But um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I will need it. Need it. And uh, I'm not like stranger to even use using some sort of saturation or distortion on, on this, but uh, it, it all depends on how I feel when it gets in. Like I said, now just doing this like basic um, string setup, it's easier listening without the music. But then when I get with music, I'm probably going to have to go back and revisit uh, some stuff uh, to make it work. But this is a little bit too sensitive stuff, and you know needs to be true to the acoustic uh, originals, so to speak. So that way it's a little hard to mix that within rhythm guitars. And it, this is starting point since I know that it's going to be passages without rhythm guitars as well, where it needs to work. Bassoon, probably the most ugly instrument in the world. Next to bass. Next to contrabassoon. <laughs> yeah, true.
could also be an idea to actually go harder on the, the some of the close mics than on the tree. That way it gets a little bit more airy. So I'm just putting this up now for, it's running pretty good. I mean, it's up to like three dBs in, in compression, but you cannot really pinpoint that it is there uh, unless you know it. it's very transparent and nice. Uh, and like I said, face coherency here is important. 